On Lake Michigan, geologists have gathered data on the fluctuations of lake level. The frequent change is superimposed as a general trend suggesting that each peak is higher than the last. The levels are rising. On the shoreline about a mile from my house, the repeated formation and breakup of ice ridges results in a significant removal of the beach. Massive concrete formations and old rusty pillars are smashed and skewed onto the shoreline. The not-so-solid earth began by interacting with beach erosion on the shores of Lake Michigan. Where water meets the edge of land, there is a constant, dynamic change. The ephemeral interfaces between water and land fascinate me. It is frequently the site of natural hazards including floods, storms, and coastal erosion. A triad of factors present themselves, terrestrial forces, aquatic forces, and human activity. Anthropocene demands we think such things as interconnected. I have become fascinated by the emergence of materials where history meets geology and forms a geohistory of painting. I want to bring the earth into painting as completely present. To in insinuate the aesthetic, I set up the parameters for a work where the landscape lands itself. The materials have their own creativity that exists as value beyond the painter's aims as a form giver. I am inspired by forms that emerge beyond my abilities, beyond my constraints. What is on show is the acting of painting as the earth acts. Art and earth are both in the aesthetic, which is to say in the sensitive. Arriving at a position beyond the agency of the painter, painting goes beyond the expressionist ideology that assumes expression to be that of a subject and moves towards nature's own capacity for creativity. It becomes active in the mineralization of the image. Through imbuing painting with a mineralized surface, I am interested in painting as an expression of geo. Its surface becomes a potential field of sedimentation and erosion, indicative of other processes in the scale. The sediment movement interests me at an intuitive level. Between the work of art and the work of nature, there is a unique kind of scale invariance. In the scale invariance, we would in the scale invariance, we would need some sort of marker in which to determine the scale. I'd like to relinquish the equation that scale and size are somehow in common collusion in order to focus on scale. Scale in the terms of Robert Smithson, who identified it as the capacity to be conscious of the actualities of perception. Quote, a crack in the wall, if viewed in terms of scale and not size, could be called the Grand Canyon, unquote. Between the mark making of art and the landscape's own kind of mark making, there are relations of scale. We can zoom in and zoom out through scales, landing into our sense. The smallest of details can harbor the most profound intensities. The imago evokes constantly changing coastlines. Each image becomes a vector frozen in the time of sedimentary processes. With geology, time has physical presence, and painting deals with time when it seizes the effectivity of geology. The effect is quite different from data. It is a lesson in scale at the level of sense perception. What kinds of actualities of perception are found where water meets land? The sedimentation and erosion suggests the becoming that builds up things and tears them down. Time, flow of materials, gravity are some of the actors within the work process becomes key since it allows the building up and eroding of layers that signifies the evocative energy of the physical medium. As a method, I seek a processual theory of matter. The reality of existence for the painter is that being is dynamic and constantly changing. But one does not deny the temporary stable, rather, stability persists as ontological secondary to the recurrence of becoming. There is an inevitability of accelerating coastal retreat. This process has gone on and will go on long after the artist is gone. In a way, the topic takes on a future tense, suggesting a theme to those who are yet to come. As coastlines erode and sea levels rise, the dynamic change will reach the spectral cities and crash their gates, whereupon the real would have interjected itself. We've seen this before, a long time ago. What is not so solid? It is the very ground beneath our feet. We can take this literally in the data of rising water levels, but we could also take it symbolically. 
There is no ground of nature for which to return, or which a return would be possible. That is the basic lesson of dark ecology. The stability of things is challenged at the site where water meets land.